Hello and good morning and welcome to St Mary's Parish Church. Here is an opening prayer for us for today. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. Let us feast on you and find nourishment for our souls. You are the light of the world. Let us follow you out of the darkness. You are the door. Let us enter the Father's presence in your name. You are the good shepherd. Let us rest in your provision. You are the resurrection and the life. Let us find true life and victory in you. You are the way, the truth and the life. Let us love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We pray this in your name. Amen. Walking on Water by Cecily Taylor Walking on water looks difficult, but I have seen it done. Those with grief enough to sink them have kept on. Drawn by an invisible source of strength, they were not let down. Crossing this sea, some swim and others drown. But some there are, walking on water. Our reading comes from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 14, and it's beginning at verse 22. This is following the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waters, because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? That's an amazing story from Matthew's Gospel, and it's in the other Gospels as well, but it's only in Matthew that we get that little bit about Peter saying to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, then let me come to you walking on the water. I remember a number of years ago attending Keswick uh, Convention, and there was an American uh, speaker and he had written a book uh, which was entitled, If You Want to Walk on the Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. And when he made his appeal at the end and asked people to stand if they wanted to begin venturing into territory where they were out of their comfort zone, it was one of the occasions where I felt compelled to stand and say to God, Lord, I want to do more than what I'm currently doing. So this all takes place on the Sea of Galilee. They are told by the Lord, indeed, the word is almost commanded by the Lord, to cross over the sea and go to the other side and to wait for him. They're about halfway across 
it's the middle of the night, something like about, well, it's only between three and six in the morning. It's probably more the earlier than the six o'clock time. The wind is against them and they are not making any progress is what Matthew records. They are being buffeted by the waves. There's a storm. They're not in peril of sinking. Do you remember that occasion when they had Jesus in the boat and he was fast asleep and they they woke him up almost angry with him, saying, Lord, don't you care that we're going to perish? And Jesus performs the miracle of calming the storm. But they're not panicking at the moment about that. But what Jesus knows from the mountainside watching them and what they're fully aware of is that it's hard going. They're not making really any progress for all the straining on the oars. The wind is against them. And I guess we all feel like that sometimes that we've been doing all we can, but we don't seem to be seeing much progress. There are a few other uh, miracles that take place on or around the Sea of Galilee. Just before this is the feeding of the 5,000. There is the story, if you remember, of the miraculous catch of fish. There is the coin in the fish's mouth. There's numbers of them that take place here. It's it's obviously a meaningful place for these disciples. Fear enters in when Jesus is approaching them and he is walking on the water. Now, the Sea of Galilee, if you've never been there, it's it's a vast body of water. It's something like 13 miles from the north to the south of it. And it's something like about eight miles across. So they're about, in the middle, four miles from land. And Jesus comes to them, walking on the water. They'd never seen him do that before. This was something totally out of their comfort zone. And Jesus knowing that they are fearful. They cried out in fear. It's a ghost. And Jesus says to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Towards the beginning of lockdown, I, through YouTube, caught uh, a piece of music from an American speaker. I was listening, first of all, to his Uh, an inspirational talk by him. He's obviously a a pastor of a church and a a great singer. And uh, he was singing a song which he said is written by Graham Kendrick and it's called No Need to Fear. I've since searched the internet and found uh, a, a, a British woman who has sung it and recorded it and uh, It's helped me immensely during this time of stress and lockdown and life for all of us changing beyond what we're used to. No need to fear. Fear when Satan seems so strong. Fear when people taunt you about perhaps not making much progress. No need to fear. We are in the hands of the Lord. Now, these disciples were clearly in the hand of the Lord. They were doing his will. We began our reading where Jesus said to them, he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. They were doing exactly what Jesus had told them to do. Jonah, he faced uh, a terrible journey in a ship and indeed was thrown over and swallowed by a great fish. But he was doing exactly the opposite of what God had told him. 
these disciples were being obedient. And I believe there's an important lesson here that when we are being obedient to the Lord, even if we are really struggling, and if things are proving very difficult, we're not making progress, we can be sure that the Lord is with us. He's not angry with us. He is coming to us to offer strength. No need to fear. I find this interesting that Peter says, Lord, if it is you, then command me to come to you. Let me walk on the water. I don't know how many of us would have said that. I don't know if I would have said that. Being in the middle, four miles away from land, hundreds of feet of water below me, a storm, darkness, waves crashing around, to have stepped out of that boat to stand on water. That took some courage. Jesus said, take courage, it is I. And we often hear a sort of little bit of ridicule of Peter, that he began to sink. His faith didn't hold up to it. But I think it's right to remember that he was the only one who stepped out of the boat. And he did walk on the water. How far he went, we don't know, we're not told. How long was he on the water, we don't know, we're not told that. But he did walk on the water. Jesus bid him, come to me. And he did. It's not incredible, wonderful. But then his eyes came off of Jesus and he began to focus more on the wind and the waves. And then he began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. I'm interested sometimes in how words are repeated in a very short passage. And this word immediately is repeated often. Verse 22, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. Verse 27, Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. When Peter cries out, Lord, save me, verse 31, we read, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? When we are doing the Lord's will, we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear Satan. We don't need to fear death. We don't need to fear the taunts of the world. One of the other lines in Graham Kendrick's song is, in the morning, I'll see his face. That's the thought, I think, that should encourage all of us on in our Christian living. Problems, struggles that we're dealing with now, one day will come to an end. And in the morning, I'll see his face. And then I will understand things much more than I do now. Then I will be able to see and enter into the full joy and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to them, knowing that they were doing his will, struggling with that. Jesus is always with us. And especially when we are struggling and feeling that we are making no headway, he comes to us and tells us, take courage, it's me. Jesus gets into the boat, the wind dies down, 
And they worshipped the Lord, the Son of God. Times when we feel fearful. And don't we all, at some time or other, have that sense of fear? God says to us, Jesus says to us, no need to fear. The devil is strong. But Jesus is far stronger. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. Father God, thank you for hearing us when we pray to you in faith. Help us to pray simply and sincerely unselfishly and gratefully, remembering the needs of others as well as our own, and giving thanks always for all things. We pray for all those who have come to know you. May they renew their relationship with you and find your peace, your strength, your grace, and above all, your presence. At this time, Lord, we pray for our nation. May you guide our leaders to do what is best for the people to help us to get through this time of COVID safely. We pray for all those affected by COVID. May you support the anxious, be with those who care for the sick and lift up all those who are struggling. May we find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so to our blessing for today. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay safe, everyone. See you soon.
See? 